Thank you very much indeed. Please Hello. take a seat. Hi. Thank you. How lovely to have you here. Um, is this your first ever visit to Brazil? Absolutely. And so your impressions having been here for just a few days? It's such a beautiful country, so fantastic people, and so smart, caring, beautiful people. So I would like to hug you all. Let's start with that hugging then. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, Adam. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, the, um, you run a lab and a research institute in Trondheim in Norway, where I know you take very good care of people. You think it's very important. To we take... try. <laughs> well, talk about how you try to take care of the environment of your colleagues and your space. Yes. Uh... What is important for me, and we are going to talk about that later today, is the responsibility of me as both a scientist but also as a leader. And I feel responsible both, of course, for the science we do, the animals we use, and also, of course, the people working with us. And people, a scientist is like an artist. Uh, your hobby is your work. Uh, so you, you spend so much time and we have so many people coming from abroad to our lab. So if people are not happy um, at work, it's a miserable life. So I've, I feel a bit of responsibility. So I haven't been able to tell you the slogan of our institute and that is of course, excellent science, which we are really working hard to achieve, but also happy animals. We do a lot to achieve that. Happy people and diversity. Right. Very much. That's so important. So these, these are, as you say, these are all topics that we'll touch on when we talk about responsibilities yeah. later. But but please. I didn't I, I didn't finish. No. <laughs> no. So 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 one thing is to to have this abstract idea that people should be happy, but in order to to try to 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 make an environment where people can be creative, then you have to see people. So we walk around and talk to people and. You, you look a bit worried today, Adam. Could I help you? I, look, I, I, was, I was looking interested. <laughs> <laughs> That's how so, we do it. Yes. Exactly. So, so that is how we do it and, and, and try to, to, to help people. And as we heard David said, to do science is hard because there are so many failures and, and you feel, as we heard from David, you, you, you bang your head to, to against the wall. But it's also like doing mathematics. If you sit or with the puzzle, you sit there and you think and you think and you discuss with people, and then suddenly you have the answer. And in this is this is I'm a trained psychologist too, so I know that to work really hard and then to get an answer, you get addicted. So that is why I say scientists talk about passion. I would rather say scientists are insane because we are so addicted to what we do, we can't stop it. I think. <laughs> I'm really interested in this idea of exploring whether people feel all right in the lab because in a way, as a scientist, you have to be, you're, there's, there's a kind of pressure to be an independent thinker, you know, to be confident, to be resilient, deal with the failures, get on with it. And in a way, that's how young scientists have to portray themselves. I'm kind of together. And when you investigate them, just, as like, just like when you just investigated me and said, you look a bit worried, Adam, <laughs> you know, the, the, immediate effect, the, the immediate response is to say, no, I'm fine. I, it's all going well. So how do you get past that? How do you really get inside people? You just read emotions and ask if you read right. No, so I, 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 I don't want to talk too much about it because I, I, I don't do only psychology in the lab. Yeah. So uh, I think what, what we, I'm, I'm so proud of um, Edward and me that we have been able, especially in our group, been able to create an environment where we together 
try to solve questions. And when we see some solutions, and it doesn't depend on if this is uh, this person's project or this per person's project, we, we solve together and we celebrate together. So to celebrate is extremely important when the lab is doing something uh, that is interesting. And, and, and we enjoy to understand the world uh, differently and to understand something together that we didn't understand the day on a Wednesday that we heard from, from oh, David. Yeah, exactly. On the Thursday we wake up and wow, we understand something we didn't understand yesterday. So you were awarded the Nobel Prize for mapping spatial representations in the hippocampus, in the entorhinal cortex, um, in, in, the, in the rats you use. And so getting, making a huge step towards understanding how the brain represents the world. But this idea of trying to untangle the networks that allow us to be conscious of our surroundings is a very slow process. I mean, it, 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 the progress is slow. Many people are trying. How do you approach such complexity? Uh, thank you for that question, Adam. No, so we, we, we had to, to, to start somewhere. So we decided to start to, to study structures that we had uh, studied before, the hippocampus. And then we moved our way in. So we started by recording single cells, and we discovered the grid cells that we got the Nobel Prize for, which is a coordinate system that you can use for metric uh, in the brain. So you can put it like a blanket and then you have a coordinate system in the room. But as we know, in your brain and my brain and your brains, there are billions and billions of nerve cells. So if you have just, the f you understand the function of a few cells, that is not sufficient. You need to know how many, many cells work together. And then in neuroscience, uh, different from probably chemistry and physics, we were waiting for the tools. So we pushed, we had ideas, but we pushed, pushed, and then suddenly, a few years ago, we got the access to new tools. So we could then go from recording a few cells at the same time, and that was fun, we will celebrate then too, but now we have thousands of cells. And then we have to use models and mathematics and physics to understand this complex network. And then we found a donut in the brain. And that seems to be a, crazy. So we a, do a donut in the brain. A donut in the brain. And uh, we were interviewed in, uh, in the national TV, and we had donuts with us and so on. So, of course, it's talking about the manifold, the way that this brain activity is working together, these, these brain cells. And uh, it was fitting the theory that uh, had been developed before, telling that it should look like this when you do this manifold um, uh, experiments uh, or, or, or calculations. So we, we reduce this high dimension, all this activity to a few dimensions, and then we ended up with a donut, and we saw how the activity moved around. It must take you into new fields all the time, because it, it does. For, uh, for instance, you're now into, into complex geometries which isn't Absolutely. presumably something you had at your fingertips before. So No, exactly. So we, we, of course, now we have stopped to do the calculations ourselves because I don't know topology in mathematics, but we collaborate with people. And that is why diversity is so extremely important for us, that we collaborate with people who really know their field. And then we know our field. We know where we want to go together with these people. And then we suddenly achieve things that we didn't achieve before and we start to understand something about the brain. What is so interesting, or maybe, no, I shouldn't talk about it because it's not published. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we are trying to write it up. Well, it's, that, it's about development. And that, it's so exciting. Well, that, ra <laughs> that raises an interesting point, and I'm going to come to questions in one second, but that raises an interesting point that 
my Brit, you, you don't travel very much. You like to stay in the lab. It's hard to, I mean, it's a, a, it's a great compliment to Brazil that you've come because you don't, it's hard to get you to, act, to winkle you out of the lab and get you here. But that's, that, that's interesting that you, you, you've managed to parcel out your time. You resist most of these invitations because you must be bombarded. So to be honest with you, uh, there's a lady in the institute just writing no's every single day, at least three, four requests. And, 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 and that's true, Adam. I, I came into science because I was a curious child or scientist. And I'm still so curious that I'm, as I say, I'm addicted to science and to be with, uh, with the people working with us, doing most excellent science and to see the development, how the questions is, uh, are evolving, how the results are coming together, write up the stories, present it to the rest of the world. It's just such a blessing. So I sometimes I sit down and ask myself, my Brit, what what have you done in life so that you are allowed to be so blessed to understand so much? Thank you. <laughs> Qu questions for my Brit. Uh, there's one straight in the front, but I won't always go to the front. But let's go here, please. Sorry, and then I see one here. Yes, that lady there. Okay. Next one will be over here. This lady with the glasses. Hand raised there. Please. Hello, Professor. My name is Marlene Souza. I'm from medical school. I am a PhD candidate in rehabilitation science, and I'm so proud to be here with you. And I have only a question for you. I'm from Amazon Forest, and in there we have a lot of women and girls like me that believe that science is only one direction. But sometimes, in another way, we never heard before women like you. If you should, can you share with us an what device, only one, to guarantee more access to women and girls like me in different positions around the world, please? Oh, yeah, I'm going to give you an advice that you will never forget. Be a scientist. Forget about what tags you have on yourself. Be proud as a scientist. Please. Hello. It's such an honor to be talking to you. My name is Elena. I'm a scientist and a research in biotechnology and cell culture. So it's really nice your slogan, like loving animals. I do too. <laughs> uh, the first, I would love to ask you, how many black students do you have in your lab? Because we are talking about the how to overcome the willing of give up. And for me, it's really important to have an example looking like me in labs from others, other countries, or like working with people important as you. I would like to know how many people look, looking like me are working with, with you, because it's really important to me to, he, to have this example, please. Thank you. Thank you for that question. And um, I, I wouldn't have sit here and say we need diversity if I couldn't prove that uh, we live uh, after that principle. And uh, in our institute, we have uh, people from uh, 30 countries throughout the world. And uh, we have uh, uh, people uh, with all colors, and we love that. Because we need people, not only colors outside, but inside. We need different attitudes. We need different training because that is what is enriching us and enriching science. So be proud of yourself. Do, does it happen naturally or do you really have to work to build diversity in northern Norway? 
Oh, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So w one time um, we, we, uh, uh, we, we saw a letter for, uh, from a reviewer that we shouldn't have seen. It was an accident. And this was a reviewer from Britain. And uh, he wrote, is it possible to have such an excellent environment in this remote place <laughs> on earth <laughs> and of course when it's so remote why should people come from the whole world to Trondheim because we love science together but do you have to yeah do you <laughs> okay there's a hand raised down here um, and one up there, please. Thank you. Okay, just can we quickly get a microphone here? Sorry, I'm so sorry. We don't have long, so please. Good morning. Thank you very much for your amazing presentation. Uh, my name is Moacy Miranda. I'm a professor at the business department at the University of Sao Paulo and the, the head of partnerships at the University of Sao Paulo as well. And my question is about the innovation because uh, we have over 2,000 research partners, international research partnership, but just a few uh, innovation partnerships. And I'd like to listen uh, from you, there is from Heart Sciences. What do you think about innovation and the relevance of the subject? Thank you very much for coming to Brazil. Welcome. Thank you. So thank you for that question too. So I'm I'm from the part of the country in Norway where they say that if uh, if you take a person like me, nail us to the wall, come back 14 days after, they will still be fat. That is just saying that we are the type of ambitious entrepreneurs in <laughs> Norway. Uh, so innovation is important, but, but even, even if I'm raised like this, in science we share instead of making money as they do uh, where, where I'm from. And I can give you an example if I'm allowed. Um, we ha had the most brilliant uh, a Chinese uh, postdoc coming from Peking University, top, 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 and he was trained as an engineer doing also some neuroscience. He um, was joining this uh, uh, trend to reduce the two photon microscope, 500 uh, kilos uh, microscope, down to less than three grams and make it so tiny that a mouse can run around, climb towers and everything. He came to our lab and did this. And then people from my place would think we can sell it <laughs> because this is this is just so fantastic. You can use this microscope and put it on an animal that is running around. You see thousands of cells glowing up like stars on the sky. And you can start to ask, why is this cell glowing up there when the animal is doing this and this? Instead of selling the microscope, we opened up. So we shared every single detail and people have used this material and they built such microscopes all out over the world now. And that is enhancing science and that is our aim. So thank you for that question. Thank you very much. Minus 15. I know we have to stop. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mybrit. We'll come back to these subjects shortly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>